for political systems to be, represent to be representative, it means all parts of the society must be included. And when young people are disenfranchised or disengaged from the political process, a significant portion of the population will have little or no influence in political decisions that affects the society at large. With this understanding, the new Nigeria People's Party, NMPP, ahead of the 2023 elections, have embarked on an aggressive youth mobilization and formation of youth wings of the party across the local government and wards in the country. And joining us live to discuss this is Reverend Victor Ekam. He's the Deputy National Youth Leader of the NMPP. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Ekam. Uh, thank you, very much. Great. It's good to be here as well. Great, great. Let's go straight to it. Um, everybody obviously uh, realizes that all political parties seem to have a youth movement of sorts, but then, of course, some more than many. Uh, but we're seeing more and more of young people getting involved in the electoral process and wanting, um, you know, to push um, one way or the other their agenda also to in the governing process. Um, the Concoursier movement is a movement that is also well known, you know, across the country. Um, how do young people tie to this movement and, and of what value does it bring to the party? Um, okay, I think I trust you for but I believe I got. Oh, unfortunately, we lost that connection. We're going to try to bring back uh, Reverend Victor Ekam uh, on the show in just a moment. It's still Plus Politics and we have back with us Reverend Victor Ekam, the Deputy National Youth Leader of the NMPC, NMPP, I beg your pardon. Uh, Mr. Ekam, before we lost that connection, we we're trying to talk about the Kwankwasiya movement, but because we do not have time, let's talk about the colloquium that you um, attended today and how um, this would one way or the other affect the campaign strategy of the NMPP and your presidential candidate, Rabi Kwankwasiya. Oh, thank you very much. I want to apologize for the network. I now have to come back next time to deal with all of the issues. Uh, with the little time I have, I thank you again for having um, a young voice on your program to talk about politics, not just the recycled voices um, from one political party to the other, which is what Senator Kwankwaso is about, enabling youth and bringing in every uh, demographic uh, for the building of uh, our nation. When it comes to the colloquium, it's it had to do with, um, today, it had to do with expanding on the educational um, um, ideas and, and programs that were implemented by our leader. There are three things that I would like us uh, to get from here very quickly. Number one is that the educational community accepts His Excellency Senator Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso. The educational community accepts him. We had professors that were represented from private universities, um, uh, public universities, different universities outside the uh, uh, inside of Nigeria, and they kept on hammering on this same thing that they have recognized his work and all of that. They all, uh, I think, he is the only presidential uh, uh, campaign uh, uh, candidate that is accepted by professors in Nigeria. Secondly, he's he's believed to be um, the only. In fact, if you want to give him a name, you have to call him Mr. Education because he's believed to be the only person that is living right now in Nigeria that has achieved uh, revamping the educational system more than any other human being alive. Number three, uh, what we can get from the colloquium uh, uh, that happened today is that he is not just somebody that gives campaign promises, he's somebody that delivers on his word. I mean, there are a lot of things that I would have mentioned, a lot of things I would have said about his achievements in the educational industry. But just imagine somebody building 13 tertiary institutions. I'm not talking about classroom. Uh, people are really talking about classroom achievements, uh, primary school and secondary school achievements. All of that, he did it two two in all of the local governments while he was he was he was governor. But imagine somebody while gov while being a governor. It's like magic. It's like, is this even possible? It, 13 tertiary institutions, including the famous Northwest University, one human person did that. Uh, I mean, I would have spoken a lot about everything he has done when it comes to the scholarship that he gave to 
more than 3,000 students that went to India, the UK, the US to go and educate and build themselves on different aspects. I'm talking about uh, pilot, law, medicine, and all of that was carrying a 20-year program to develop a state to become an international standard state so that they will come back and be in all of these industries to build back the nation. I mean, there is a lot that went down today, and those are the three things that we can get uh, uh, from the uh, colloquium. Unfortunately, time is not on our side, but I want to say thank you. Victor Ikam is the Deputy National Youth Leader of the NNPP. Thank you so much for coming. We, prob we probably will have you again sometime to come and talk about more uh, on the youth participation part of your political party. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you very much. And that's the show tonight. We apologize for all the hiccups, but that's what you get. Um, hopefully one day we will have a smooth internet connection in Nigeria. But my name is Mary Anna Kuhn. Have a beautiful evening. See you tomorrow as we talk for development.